I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to another episode of Heavy Muscle Radio. We are live. I'm Dave Palumbo, joined by the technician, Chris Aceto, or I should call him the traveling uh, technician this weekend because he just got back from the Muscle Inc. Guy Sister Nino's gym grand opening that took place in New Jersey. I saw there was a lot of uh, celebrities there, Chris. Yeah, it was packed. It was, it was uh, everyone who I ever coached was there. <laughs> really? Is that true? No, I just, I mean, people showed up. The people who showed up are just. How did he get Jay to show up? That that was a real, very. Uh, because very nice they're, they're good friends. And, and Jay, unlike some people who didn't show up, um, Jay is like, uh, uh, you know, Jay is a special man. Jay is. He's busy, too. Huh? Jay is a, a busy guy, and he still showed Jay, up. That was great. Jay, Jay came in, so you know, guy invited him, wanted him there, and Jay came in late, late uh, Friday. Right. He showed up early, like right from the get-go. Saturday had this ridiculous line, continuous and nonstop. The entire oh, did he really? Time. Wow! Even at the gym opening. Of course. And then what was he doing? Hold on. What was he doing at the gym? Was he signing pictures and stuff? Signing freebies and pictures oh. and you know, talking to people and he had, you know, he was there and he stayed to you know, he had to leave. He had to get out of there at four so he could go catch his flight wow. and go back home. Now does Jay still do I mean oh, Jay never really charged for pictures. I mean for, for the last fifteen years as far as I know, he used to give pictures away. Does he still do that? Um, I'm sure he does. He he yeah. uh Pictures. He was giving away like posters, I think, or something. Oh, okay. You know that picture doesn't show it, but you know Jay looks remarkably youthful. It's yeah. it's unbelievable. Did you uh, did you tell him he should make a comeback or no? No, but I told Victor if you scroll on that Instagram. Picture, well, I told you, Victor. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I told you, Victor was huge when I saw him at the Arnold. He I saw. Like, if you scroll, you see Victor, <laughs> and. That's uh, Rob. Is, that's Rob Yules in the, on the left. Yeah. That's Chris Victor, and then Jose Raymond with the with the gray beard. Yeah, and if you if you uh, Dave, the, the first thing I thought of immediately is like you could compete and be very competitive. He, he looks is, the same. He looks the same. He looks, he I aged. told Dave he looks the same. He talks the same. He's the same. Yeah. he hasn't aged one 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 day. He hasn't aged. And Victor's another one. You know, guy said, "Can you be there?" That was like four months ago or something. Yeah, but Victor lived in, in Jersey, so that I, you know what Jay did was a little bit more. Uh, you yeah, know, but you know how people are. This is the way people are. Oh, yeah. bro, for you, I'd do anything, anything, right, right. gross, because guy does so much for other people. Then it's time to turn around and like, hey, right, can you come? Right. no, sorry, I got like uh, my you know nephew's you know bar mitzvah or, or sure. soccer game or something going on. So is the okay. what's what's um what's cleaner, guy's house or the gym? Uh the house is like a museum. <laughs> no, Jose Raymond's house. I, I flew, I drove down, took right. the third year old Mercedes down to uh it made the trip, huh? You didn't get yeah, stuck. I, I me and Jose flew from Boston to New Jersey and Jose's house, which is uh impeccable, he designed it. Um he did, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And uh so Jose's house, I, there's not a, there's not a thing. I, it's spotless beyond spotless. So, right. you know, he's. I didn't uh, know Jose was a clean freak too, huh? I don't know if he's a clean freak, but that he is when it comes to the house. He just told me when we were leaving, when we were leaving the airport, he said, oh, my cleaner. I said, what, what's on your agenda this week? And he said, this and this and this, and the cleaners coming. I'm like, what are they coming for? What are they coming for? You know? He's smart. He's got a, yeah, I always have a cleaning crew also because, uh, 
I don't like to. But there's nothing like to spot. Do. I'm a spot cleaner. I don't like to do the deep cleaning. So you got to get. Yeah, well, he said he wanted the deep cleaning in the shower, yeah. and I said I already investigated it. I didn't see any. He should have hired guy to come to his house. Now that he went to guy's uh, grand opening, guy can go. I, and I would do it. Guy's loyal. Guy will enough. take the toothbrush and he'll clean the the shower. But uh, I yeah, I have to go see guy's gym at some point when I'm in New York. I might go up for New York Pro, so I, maybe I'll drive over to guy's gym because Evan, I'm sure Evan it's was, immaculate. It's probably Evan, amazing. Evan was there. Who else was there? Evan Santapani was there. Oh, cool. And I see they have the Sean Roden posing room. Is that, yeah, that's cool. Beautiful painting. Oh, I, I, oh, the painting wasn't, I didn't post the painting, but there's a oh. painting in the room. Of yeah. Sean? Oh, God, it's so authentic. Like the facial, the, the way the hips, the Who did it? Guards. Someone guy knows, you know, the hands, the, the shoulders. The the arms. Arms. Credit for that. Come on. Um, Nick, Nick Walker was there and his parents were there. Oh wow! Yeah, no, I think yeah, Nick, I told, Nick Walker's I parents are bigger bodybuilding fans than Nick is. Yeah. Well, I told her that I wanted to. Uh, I saw them uh, do no, the wrap up at the at the at the New York Pro. I wanted to do the wrap up with her because she's totally into it. She's got a great eye. Yeah, she's. <laughs> she came yeah. up to me at the Arnold. She spotted me at the Arnold, and she came up and said hello to me. And uh, is this? Oh, here it is. I found it on Guy's page. Oh, Nick was there. Um, Nick looks gigantic. Yeah, Sean. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty crazy. Because yeah, Sean and Guy were very, very, very tight. Well, he's the he's the the godchild, uh, godfather yeah. of, the, of his uh, kid, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, who else was there? Uh, uh, Akeem was there. Akeem showed up. Oh, good. Uh, uh, Victor. A lot of people there, and then just just you know, tons of. Tons of people. It was packed, right. and of right. course, guy, he went all out. They had, you know, they just had free, you know, free food, free this, free, you know. The guy, uh, did the guy cook the food himself? No, he had like a. There was a pizza truck there, right parked out in front of the entrance. Oh, nice, nice. And he had all the little snack food, muffins, and stuff. So, like what that. do you know? The technical, uh, all the machines he's got there. I see he's got some, some. New, I like it's new, new tech. I think it's from Korea. Oh. It looks it was, good, you know. I told the guy yeah, text, new tech, yeah, that's what it's called. Guy texted Jose this morning to wanted to see if he, you know, wanted to before we left. He said, "You you guys going to come to the gym? You guys, like me included, come to the gym and train." I said, "Guy, you know, I trained legs last in '96, and I don't think they've recovered yet." Now, why do you know why he opened that gym in Bethlehem, uh, PA? What the story is with that? I don't know. I think it was like uh, I think Joe Piscopo owned that gym at one time. Oh, did he? <laughs> I know it was a it was like a retro fitness. I think before that, yeah, the retro fitness and you, the opportunity came. I don't think I was, you know, interested. I'm surprised, guy. You know, I had asked him because far, you know, that's far yeah, from. I, mean, I don't think he had any interest, you know, in being a gym owner. And right. he had the right partners, the right lease, the right yeah. opportunity, and he just said, "Why not?" So is he driving back and forth to that gym? Yeah, one hour. Anymore? One hour. Yeah. Wow. Hour. See, uh, my roommate in college was from Bethlehem. So I've actually been to Bethlehem. They had the racetrack there, all the Andrettis, the Mario Andretti, you know, that whole family, they all live there. And uh, so, I, you know, Lee is, Lee is going to go to, I guess, the gym. Make a, Lee Priest is going to make an appearance. I said, Lee, you can go race around the track, you know, because he's a, you know, Lee used to race cars. I said, the track is unbelievable there. It's huge. It's like the whole town centers around, you know, race car driving there. And, uh, so I yeah I've been there before. I my my college was like a, about an hour south of there. When guy gets pulled over from driving from from New Jersey to Pennsylvania, driving like a maniac, 110 miles an hour. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's a cute it's a cute little town. I haven't been there in, in 25 years, you know. But it's it's a, it was a cute town when I went there back in the day in the 80s. Yeah, we didn't see much. Me and the, the 90s, I should say. Yeah, but. The, you know, the, the Pennsylvania uh, bodybuilding community there is very hardcore. And not just Pit, people think of Pittsburgh as bodybuilding. Pittsburgh is all the way in the west. This is yeah. the east part, eastern part of Pennsylvania. You know, you got Bethlehem. I know there's this Philly there. Obviously, you got where I went to school, Lancaster. There was a big, big bodybuilding contingency there that, that just they love, you know, training hardcore. York Barbell is, is right next to Lancaster. You know, that's in York, PA. So, yeah. There is a, a very storied history of bodybuilding in that state. So 
it's not far from, I saw the signs on the highway because we drove from Newark down and I saw it's very close to Eastern Pennsylvania, which is yes. where Larry Holmes is from. Oh, Larry and, Holmes? Yeah. And Larry Holmes, I told, uh, of course, I told Jose that Larry took all his winnings and he invested it in real estate in Easton. He, he owns the whole town, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, I like the whole town. So I wanted to go see it. And right. Maybe put him on my YouTube yeah, yeah. Chris, okay. Chris went to, went to Guy's um, gym opening, but he really was interested in seeing the Larry Holmes real estate holdings in uh, Eastern Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> you got you got to multitask. I always say, you know, kill two birds with one stone. If you're going to expand your real estate empire, can you do it in Florida? Buy some stuff in Cape Coral here. All right. It's what I tell you. It's it's Cape Florida still, even though you know I just saw prices like you know Florida, of course, as you know. Yeah, it is accelerating, you know, in terms of price points. Yep. But you know, when you factor in no taxes, and you move it down from Connecticut, Massachusetts, or New York, it's still, right. you know, it's still cheap. Yep. Yep. It's all relative. Well, I'm glad you had a good time there. And uh, are you? Uh, did you pick up any new clients? No, no. You know, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't pick any up any new clients. Was anyone talking about the? Uh... Like was Jay or anyone talking about the results of the Arnold? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, nobody did. We didn't. Nobody really. We didn't talk Bible. We talked everything else. And Branch was there too. Branch Warren, who you oh, know, that's I, right. yeah, I remember never, you told me. I never met Branch Warren, and I, you know, which you is, did. I've never really met him, which is too bad because uh, he's a great he, guy. He's an outstanding individual, and yeah. uh, you know, look at the people actually who who are there. Frankly, me, Jose, right. Victor, uh, Evan, Jay, Branch, you know, this it's hard to find people to find, you know, bad things to say about that group. Yeah, yeah. Who were there. And and Branch, I, I only got to speak with him for, you know, at Guy's house after for maybe a half hour or so, 45 minutes. But, you know, Guy is always bragging about branch what a great guy he is what a great guy and, and jose says what a great guy and jay's always says branch you know top notch and and victor's mentioned him too as being a great guy so uh and he is when you meet him he's just authentic and and uh you know looks you in the eye when he talks to you and you know he's serious and he's got stories to share and you know we got talking a little bit he has been everywhere for bodybuilding I mean, everywhere. Yeah. You know, a lot of bodybuilders, as you, you yourself, you know, included, have traveled a lot, a lot, a lot for bodybuilding. But and, and Guy and, of course, Jay and Jose, and we did talk about traveling. I, we were talking about that somehow. And like, you know, you pick somewhere and, like, someone say, hey, you've been there? And, like, Branch is like, oh, yeah, I went, went there four times. Right. You know, it's funny. Uh, Branch, you know, just had a, a new son. It was just born recently. Yeah, I told him. I said, Branch. He pulled a Chris Aceto. I said, now, I, uh, you know, I'm not being mean, but you will be uh, at the playground, and people are going to say, you know, is this your granddaughter in a couple of years? <laughs> and, he, and he said he knew how old his uh, – he just had a daughter, right? Daughter or no, son? No, he had a son. He had a son. Okay, son. He, he, he already mentioned uh, that his son would be – uh, you know, he would be 70, whatever, when his son was, you know, in high school. So you and I will be also 70 by the time our, yeah. our youngest are in high school. So, yeah, <laughs> we, we you know, know I, all about that, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 God, all, all, I, I from all, the, all the stuff that people tell me that's not yeah. true. They'll keep yeah. you young. They'll we keep you young. I said, no, they won't. They'll accelerate your age. They'll yeah, they'll exactly. <laughs> You know what the funny thing about the whole that whole crew, Evan, Guy, I'm sure Chris LeCompte was probably there too, and um, all those. There, you know, these are all guys that I met, you know, back in like 07, 08, and you know, I was working with all those guys. Yeah, and they, sure. I mean, they just entered the industry, really. I yeah. mean, he I know them that, we, that we, long. You know, yeah, your I, name I, came up, Dave. People actually yeah. said when they saw me, it's like Dave coming. I'm like, no, I, brought I didn't it even know about it. To be honest, Jose, I mean, I, I, Jose I, is my date. I think guy didn't want to put pressure on me to like, you know, but I'm sure he would have, I, I'll, I'll get, I, I'll get to his gym because I, I'll go on my own. Uh, but it was gym. great. And, and, and guy's birthday was a couple days ago. So they sang him happy birthday and 
Oh, that's good. I, I said, guy, this is like like you're like the prom king today. <laughs> You know, it was like my 40th birthday party when they all went there. It was yeah, funny. And he, he, he was gave an outstanding speech. An outstanding sure. speech. This is perfect for Guy, really. I, I mean, I told Guy, I said, Guy, it was, it was outstanding. However, Jay, for, for, Jay edges you out for bodybuilding speech of the year. So yeah, yeah I, I think so. Yeah. No, but you know, the, the opening a gym and owning a gym for Guy is, is perfect. And I'll tell you why. Because he needs a place where he can go every day and 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 be in charge of something that is creative yeah. and that's ever growing and expanding because otherwise he's going to get bored and he's going to he's going to he's not going to he's not going to be productive this is perfect for him because he's a neurotic it, the gym will be spotless he'll constantly get new equipment for it i i know his whole mentality this is a good – some people are meant to be gym owners. I, I think he'll be a very good gym owner. And you know what? He'll make that gym profitable too, I guarantee it. So. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it'll be profitable from – I think it's – You profitable. and I would be the worst gym owners. You know why? Because we're, we're too aloof. We don't pay attention to details. You know, we yeah. – he's on the, on top of everything, that guy, you know. Yeah. He uh, – Congratulations, guy. He's got a great room in his, in his house with, uh, you know, just like pictures of him – Right. From like winning the middleweights to right. you know first Olympia, first pro show win. You know he's got his he's got like in a in a case like every year the pro cards that you know Mannion sends you. Yeah. You know from the, <laughs> he I think he ran out of shit to do. That's why I said he needs a gym to kind of memorabilia. Keep you know, and yeah. then he's got like you know it's like <laughs> you know he's I, I forget he's won seven pro shows, so he's got like the medals. Right. Gay framed and right, right, right. Thing looks yeah, you know what? Now he can expand that whole thing to the next, you know, to the next. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> in other words, he's got, he's got like, he would be a good curator of the bodybuilding hall of fame if you take what's in his house. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. You know, You're I'm right. surprised he doesn't have like the ticket stubs from every Olympia that he went. He probably does. You know, what? I, I, I did. <laughs> All I know is that 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 uh, that journal of his definitely outdoes Milos's journal for sure. You know how yeah. the Milos journal, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, 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 guy's yeah. journal is way more detailed. He, you know, he has bowel movements in there and, and all kinds yeah. of stuff. And then you know, he he had uh, not only the Dave. He's such a special guy. He we went to his house after, and he's yeah. marinating all these steaks and cooking all this food. <laughs> Running out on his back, you know, he's got the he probably running. killed the, the stuff you ate right before you got there, too. You know, yeah, no. So, so when we he went back, it. me, Jose, and oh, uh, Antoine Valier came down too from uh, you mean Valiant, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. what's it, a Antoine? It's Antoine Valiant, yeah, Valiant. Yeah. Uh, he came down from, from Canada, love and, uh, him. What a great crew of you people you yeah. have there. Oh, you know, who uh, flew in is uh, Justin D's also. Oh, real oh, excellent! Love, I love Justin too. I, every person yeah. you mentioned, I like. And so, you know, that's the type of people who are around him. And so, a lot of people went back, but not tons, to his house. And he was like a maniac cooking, you know, giant steaks. He loves the barbecue. Yeah, he's yeah, like the, running out on the back. The, the king of the barbecue. He's got it. He's like the uncle who who controls the barbecue. You know, when you go to the oh, he totally the is out of the kitchen. <laughs> He's like marinating the onions, Dave. <laughs> marinating the, the 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 big chunks of onions with olive oil and salt. And stick. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> tomahawk steaks. That's right, exactly, Joe. They're, they're Fred uh, Flintstone steaks. The steaks yeah, are like yeah. you know gigantic. Yeah, he. I'm sure he had the best of the best, and I'm sure he. It, his father might have been the butcher that, that filleted him up too. So yeah, yeah he might have done it. You ever see him? You ever see those videos he puts on his Instagram where he fillets up the deer they catch and stuff? Oh yeah, I've seen it before. He sent it to me. Yeah, they're great. I, I love watch. I told him do more of that shit. I, I it's like addictive to watch. You know. Yeah. The vegans probably hate him, but who cares? You know. <laughs> All right. I wanted to talk about the uh, upcoming Arnold Brazil. That's going to be in less than two weeks now. Uh, I'm hearing some updates. What's your uh, What's your ear to the street on that? I don't know. You know, I mean, you got this Raphael in the show, John Del Rosa's in the show. Yeah, I saw someone did a uh, a thing about Tony O'Burton being the the uh, the favorite. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that, but no, only I mean, because he was the highest placing Olympian. But I, I, I would have to think that 
Rafa probably was would be coming off those Arnold, you know, that Arnold placing. Um, yeah, Rafael's going to be the favorite, but Antonio Burton's a very, very dangerous body builder. Yep. Um, you know, Del Rose is in the show. Guido's in the show. Oh, is Del Rose confirmed? I think he's down there now. And then oh, you know, great. Carlos, Carlos, Carlos Jr. Thomas Jr. Good yeah. veto. Not to be confused with Carlos Thomas Senior. <laughs> no, he's not competing. No, he'll be there though. I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure he's there. He's probably there now. Yeah, he's got to be the most well-known father of like any uh, any of the competitors. Nick Walker's parents are pretty close, but I think Carlos Thomas uh, Junior. Uh, yeah, Doctor Doctor, uh, Doctor what I call him? Do uh, You're your confusing name? with Doctor Farah. No, no, I I called I called Carlos. Carlos call father, Williams, call the Williams brothers. Richard Dr. Williams, you called. Doctor Richard for to mock him like uh, Serena Williams' father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves that when you call him that. Uh, oh, oh, Kenny, Kenny, the posing uh, king was down there. I too. knew Kenny Wallach had to be there because he was he grew up with all those guys. He and Kenny, when, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny said, "Do you have my number?" And I said, "Kenny." You know, even before Trump, I started the nicknames. It's true, Dave. You know, I, I used to nickname everybody, and I said, "You were in my phone," and I scrolled it up. It says. He's, he saved under Kenny 20,000 wins. <laughs> Kenny, when when I started working with Evan, Evan came down with, with Guy, Kenny Wallach, all the time. They would come to my house all the time. And that's when Kenny was first starting to help these guys with the posing and stuff like that got into it. I send so many of my clients to Kenny now because I don't know who to send them. You know, I don't know who to send them to it, but he's, 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 I don't know how he does all the posing sessions with people because he he must do a hundred sessions, you know, a week at least, probably more than that. Oh yeah, yeah. not stop. Because I know at least ten of my clients that use him regularly, and, and I imagine that he does a way way more than that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, all right. So getting back to the show, yeah, I I think that it's going to be a pretty interesting show. I think this might be obviously we're not getting Hottie and we're not getting Samson here, but but we have a pretty good lineup. I think with it's like it reminds me of like what the. New York Pro or the Night of Champions used to be back in the day. We have a lot of like new, newer up and coming guys, but who are at the top of their game now doing it. Obviously, uh, you know, Carlos is going to be in the show. Tonio, who won the New York Pro last year, is going to be in the show, you know, and uh, Rafa, who just came off that really third, impressive third place finish at the Arnold. He's obviously the Brazilian. And then Good Vito, Chris has been, I'm not allowed to show him, I don't think, but Chris has been sending me some great pictures of Good Vito. Yeah, yeah, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. How do you think he, you know, what do you, what's your, I know you obviously work with him, but what's your take on how he's going to play? I think he's a solid top five guy. Yeah. I mean, I think he's, he's got a couple knockout shots. So, yeah. um, I mean, more than two, but uh, I think, you know, it's, I think he's going to do really well. He's an interesting guy because, you know, no one's seen him yet, you know, at, at, at his best. And I mean, this picture is, is pretty, I mean, it's pretty impressive. You know, I don't think I've ever seen him even close to this lean when he was competing last time. Yeah, no, he's, he's you know what, Dave, the, the fact is he's probably the same weight as uh, as he was when he competed, I think, a couple of years ago, but he's not the same person as a couple of years no. ago. I mean, he's got more maturity, he's got more size, he's got more, you know, way more condition. Yeah, and as Lonnie Teeper would say, he's got calves too. He's got well. He's got crazy quads and crazy arms. Yeah. You know that's a you know with that's a, a killer body. shot. That's a killer shot. Yeah. See, I'd I'd love to see him next to Nick Walker on stage. Yeah, and the back the back last right is is better than the front double, so that's yeah impressive. You know, yeah. How do you think he's going to go do against guys like Rafa and? Uh... Um, I think you know. You know, he'll probably, you know, that's just the way it is, have some butterflies, right? Because he's right. never competed as a professional. And you're going up against guys like Rafael's done a lot of shows. Antonio's done a lot of shows. Right. Uh, De La Rose has done a lot of shows. So as long, I think he's going to do great so long as he, you know, knows how to, you know, knows how to project himself as somebody who can win the show. Um, right. But that's hard to do when you're, you know, sometimes when you get backstage and you're like, oh, I'm in the, you know, big show with people with, you know, been in a lot of shows. Sometimes you forget, you know, how to hit your poses the right way or 
you know, you expend so much energy and a certain call out that by other call outs, you're all gassed out. Right. Um, so, you know, people do have experience on them, but, uh, you know, he still has the body. Yeah. I'm Tony Burton has got to be very dangerous in this lineup too, just because of his, he's got the, you know, all that. Wow. Kind of like a, uh, you know, some people com- uh, compare him to Dexter Jackson. I don't know if I compare him to Dexter. He's kind of like a, like almost like a William Bonac, don't you think? No, I would say he's more like a Dexter because he's, you know, technically he's not big, but he's big. He's you pretty know? big. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> he's pretty big, Chris. He has like the Bonac glutes and you know the the whole. Yeah, he's impressive. You know, yeah. he's, he's this he's is a, this was his New York Pro victory here. Uh, uh, he's uh, I think he's a lot better now than he was then. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to be better, but I, I I think the guys he's going against are going to be better too at this show. I mean, he at the, at the Olympia, you know, he was as polished as probably anyone on stage. Yeah, yeah. The Olympia, you know what I mean? That's that's saying a lot, you know. In term, what polish means is a refined look with clean lines, lack of weaknesses, uh, condition from head to toe. That's saying a lot. I I agree with you. I think he's. I think wow factor counts for a lot. I mean that. I don't think ever, anyone ever thought William Bonek was going to do as well as he did as a pro, and then, you know, he had that wow factor though, and I think that 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 really impresses the judges. All that detail and all that gnarly, you know, muscle and not really missing any any body parts and stuff like that. And that to me, that's, you know, that that's what win shows. You know, wow, yeah. you know. Uh, it sets apart just the big guys who are in condition from the guys that are just got that freaky proportion. Yeah. I don't know, freaky proportion seems to just trump everything, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's why, absolutely. It's 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 the it, that's what's great creates the illusion. <laughs> Brock Quake, Br- Brick Quake wants to know if you'll train Jimmy the Bull for a comeback. No, Victor, Victor for a comeback, but Victor not for the game. comeback. Victor for the comeback. <laughs> what do you think about, um, you know, John De La Rosa's chances in this lineup? I mean, we've seen what he looked like. He was very impressive at both Arnold's. I think it's a great idea that he's doing all three. And uh, uh, but the the competition is different now in this it's than than the Arnold. I mean, is, is it going to be harder for him here? Do you because the guys stack up better with him, or do you think it's going to um, be even better here? No, I think he's going to do even better here just because, you know, you have the solid one-two with the Arnold out of the equation. So it allows you to look more at him. Right. And – What does he got to do to beat Rafa here, you think? Um, that's a great question. He needs I mean, to really he needs to really hit his peak. Um, which he looks like he was at his peak at the last two shows. So yeah. It's, yeah. It's I hard say to know that. how to tweak that because I, I want to say he needs to be fuller from the front, but I don't think it's a fullness issue. It's just a size issue. Yeah. Because, you know, his back shots are A plus. Yeah. Um, and you know, he's very good from the side too. You know, side he's, chest, side tricep. Yeah. Um, he's very complete. Yeah, he's very complete. Um, there's not much more he can do to improve that right now, you know, from from those last two shows. Mm-hmm. So I think that you know the best bet would just try to replicate what he what he already brought. Right. You know, because I, I I I think he was justly rewarded, you know, for the his placings, you know, and what he brought the last couple of shows. But um, I think that there is this kind of like advantage of people be people judges will be looking for him you know if you're a judge you say like wow del rosa looked really good twice you know and you automatically in your head are going to be looking for him for the show and if he can just bring what he brought at the last two shows if you're a judge you you have him you know you're going to mix it up and give him the contention to be right there i think yeah i agree with you rafa what does he do to win this show just show up the same way he was yeah show up the I- same way up the same way so you don't because, think he needs to be harder at all um i th- i thought he needed to be harder over the the you know in the last show yeah that's what i'm saying um 
but at the same time, you 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 have to go. You have to think about what what you were rewarded on. Yeah, you know what I mean. And he was rewarded on that look. So you know, deviating away from it sometimes. But he was also going against a um, Samson Dowda who wasn't, you know, shredded to the bone. So yeah, even his his ninety eight percent was still better than Samson's, you know, conditioning on yeah. stage. So does he go for a hundred percent here to hopefully just seal the deal because he's going to get crazy freaky guys like Tony O'Burton up there. He's going to get John who's in, in ridiculous shape. You know, we don't know what Car- Carlos has got a lot of mass on him. We don't know what his conditioning is. Hopefully his conditioning is going to be perfect. What would you say? What's the plan? What would you say the plan that Neil Hill goes with with him? Um, I think they're going to go tighter. Yeah. I don't know. They might try to go bigger. I think that would be a mistake in this lineup. Yeah. You, you don't know until you see how tight other people right. are. But you have to make a, a call on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the whole key. So what's the call? Um, I don't know. You say tighter, I say bigger. And we'll see. All right, let's pull up. Let's give uh, Carlos Thomas some love here. Let me pull his uh, picture. Oh, get the father on the phone. Call him up. <laughs> yeah, we should we have him call. See, I'm, I have him call. Call. <laughs> I'm sure he's watching right now anyway. No, but. Dave, call him. See if he'll do a sky. He'll come on. <laughs> I'll send him the link. Yeah, just just text him. Say Chris wants you to come on. Carlos Thomas Jr. has the, the you know potentially like you know the the, the, the I think the, he's the best of them all. If, if he could get the conditioning, we haven't he's, we haven't seen a brain conditioning yet, and it could just be a muscle maturity thing. But it seems like he's getting a grainier look to his body than he had. He grew. People don't realize. You know, I worked with him when he was a middleweight. And at Nationals, he got his pro card. He he grew so much. Uh, well, he got his pro card, excuse me, as a super heavyweight. But I'm just saying he grew from middleweight to super heavyweight in one year. That's a lot of muscle to put on. And then he put even more muscle on after that. So it, it takes time to grow into that muscle sometimes. We've talked about this before. And um, so I, I think that he's he's young still. He's still coming into his own. I think the next – this year, next year, the year after that, we're going to see, you know, some some pretty freaky – stuff coming from him i mean he's he's absolutely enormous i mean he does not need any more muscle on his body at this point yeah he's just impressive Let, let's get you i'm telling you this show would be great with his father <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I should i should i should have had a you know we'll get his father on when, when we get closer to the show i'll have we him close to the show we're two weeks out <laughs> So. Yeah, he looked great when he won the overall. Yeah, yeah. Who do you think could be a wild card in this show that we might not be suspecting or expecting? Well, I just think that the wild card is Carlos. That's what I think too. Yeah. You know, so we don't know what we're going to get from him. You, you, you. I, I don't think anyone can match his um, mass. Well, it's cartoonish mass. Yeah. Because I mean, there's 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 mass monsters who look like crap, and there's mass monsters who, you know, have flow. He's a mass monster with flow. He's impressive. All right, I'm gonna, this is a good picture. This was eight weeks out. Hold on, but this was uh, to show his progress from last year. Pretty this is eight weeks out this year. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure. It says this was eight weeks between. Oh wait, hold on. No, April that's 20, uh, uh, this is from last year. Yeah, yeah, he's better than that now for sure. Yeah, 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 he is. Yeah, that's, that's an older picture, sorry. He's got big freaking arms, man. He's impressive. He's definitely going to be, I think, like you said, the wild card. I think he can win the whole thing or he can blow it, you know. <laughs> I hate to be the voice of doom, but it's one or the other. Well, you know what, Dave? He he looked really good in Texas, actually, and people were critical of him. I said, "Well, he." You said he, he looked great, yeah. He he went against a uh, by ten miles all time best Hunter Labrada. Right. That was like Hunter's beyond best, and he went against um, Andrew Jack's best. Right. 
So, you know, he was at his best, Carlos, but, you know, he was up against two guys who just were, you know, hit it, hit the nail on the head that day. He was up against an Olympia top, top, you know, 10 people. I mean, that was incredible what he accomplished. Yeah. Well, a fourth place guy and a fifth place guy. Yeah. But, um, so that, I, you know, I wanted to bring up something else that, cause you had, um, you know, you're, I always say you're the, the prophet when it comes to uh, predicting what's going to happen. But Olympia Olympia money, money. Speak, of, speak of that. They, they announced it yet? What? And that's what? Money. That was my, you know, my prediction. No, <clears throat> not, not yet, but they'll raise it, I'm sure. They're nervous. It's not a goal. It'll be over 500. Now, Urs Kalsinski announced that he's going off social media. He's taking a break from competing probably till the Olympics. Who predicted that? You did. That's what I'm saying. You're the prophet, I call you. Why, what, what's going on? You think you think too much pressure on him too quickly, yes. young guy? Yeah, great guy. Yeah. Too much. Too much. Yeah. Probably a good a good thing. You know what? You get the especially the young guys get very caught up in social media and they, they have to respond to everyone and they and they argue with everyone. And sometimes it's just exhausting. And it's uh it's nice to take a break sometimes, believe me. I, Dave, I I predicted that three weeks ago. I predicted yeah. the it was, you know. It's it's just uh, you know social media. Um, I know bodybuilders. I guess I know. I'm, I'm told that they have to have a you know social. You have to have a social media presence, um, and you know I'm not a kid, so I never read anything. That's like if I post something, I don't read like the follow ups. What people say. Um, part of it is I don't have time. Part of it is I don't care. Um, but when you're, you know, 22, it's whatever he is, 23, 24, 25. Yeah. You know, it's, of course, if I was 23, 24, 25, I'd post a picture of myself and I'd, I'd want to see what people say, but what people say, even if you don't know them and you can't see them and they're technically, you know, keyboard warriors, it has a effect on you. Yeah. And I tell every bodybuilder I work with, stay off social media. Do do not read anything about yourself. Yeah. Good you, or bad. No, you, you make it. Yeah. It does not matter. And you say it perfectly. You could post stuff, don't read the responses. I don't that's what I I don't read I don't there's read no, any. I don't there's, care. there's no benefit to no. reading the responses. No. no. Post your stuff to promote yourself and your brand. And then just leave it alone. Don't go. Don't start responding to every single person. You don't have to. He's got one point four million followers. He doesn't have to respond to anyone. You know, if if Einstein was around today, and you know, they'd be like, "You're not that smart." If Elon Musk, if Elon Musk was buffed to the max, <laughs> and he started posting pictures, and he looked like he could win, like the Masters Olympia, people would just say, like half the people would say, "Well, he juice the max," or the Tesla socks, or. <laughs> Uh, no, they'd say Einstein is an idiot, right? Because he fell yeah. down at a, a, a grade school. Never so. graduated from college. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it funny? All the all the all the people, uh, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. all dropped out. Steve Jobs. They they couldn't go to college because too e- it was too boring for them. Too easy. Well, you know what it is. Also, it's 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 like it brainwashes you in a certain direction. And I think when you're a creative. A super creative thinker like that, it, it it it's actually detrimental to go to school. Absolutely, it is. Like for Einstein, he never would have come up with all those crazy theories if he was like you know like a crazy crazy you know student. Yeah. You know, he he needed to be in like a, he was like working in a back room somewhere and he was scribbling scribbling notes on like a napkin like my father would do when he's writing and, and he's he's putting the e- equal m c square. This seems like a pretty good equation. You know, <laughs> changes the changes all of science. You know, so. Who knows? I, I I I have to assume people are attracted to what they need, and they're negatively attracted to what they don't need. And you and I can't figure out why some people go certain directions, but they know because their internal guidance system will take them there. So not everyone's a student. Some people need school. I I did. You and I did very well in school because it helped structure our mind and how we think. You know, analytic, analytically. Some people like who are artists, they don't want to think analytically. They want to think. You know, yeah, the big, 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 yeah. big free flowing picture. Right. So everyone, everyone garnishes what they need. That's why school is not for everyone. You know, it, it really isn't. 
And nowadays, it's, it's probably a negative if you go to college. You get brainwashed really badly in, in uh, college. Tell my, son, tell my son to drop out, uh, give him the money for bodybuilding. <laughs> because the school would be cheaper. The food, the food would be cheaper than the, than the, the food, the tuition at college. Yeah. You should have them just manage your, your, all your, uh, your, your properties. Probably make way more money doing that. Go to college. No, no. To me, college was great because I didn't have to work. It was like it was an excuse not to work. That's, you know, I'm in college. I have to, I have to study. I, I had to work and go to college. You were? Oh, you worked in college? I didn't work when I was in college. No. Oh God! I can only do the worst four years of my life, Dave, because I had to go to college and work and go to find. Where did you work? I worked at a bookstore. I worked at a flower shop. I worked. Really? At, wow! Yeah. You, I'm, that's impressive. Yeah, I worked at the I, I worked at, at the the college gym on Saturdays and Sundays. Wow! I, I had that's how I you know I had to pay yeah. for school. Had to have some money. Right, right. So you, your parents didn't give you any money? No, and I did in those years. Consumption was like zero. No, I know. Isn't that funny? Yeah, I I used to pay ten cents for a can of brown tuna. <laughs> I'd buy like fifty cans. Think about it. Cans would be probably be five bucks. I would wait till they go on sale, right? You you would buy the fifty cents, right? And you could buy would, like. Remember, remember okay. that. Uh, what was the uh, the movie with the, the the fifty ways to make shrimp with Bubba Gump shrimp uh, with? Tom oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I I would make I'd make tuna in like fat free mayonnaise. I'd put. Uh, Egg whites with tuna and, and a little bit of flour make like little protein like uh, tuna burgers with it. Eggs were very cheap then too. I used to buy eggs were ridiculous. Eggs. Yeah, ridiculous. I would eat them like two, three times a day sometimes. Yeah. But now eggs are like what six dollars a dozen, yeah. <laughs> or six dollars like for eighteen of them. It's crazy. They, they used to be. 49 40 cents. 40 cents. Yeah, 49 cents. You're right. A dozen, and you could get you could get certain ki- types of fish that people didn't eat in Maine for a buck a pound. Wow. And, and I'm a sure our parents, if they were alive, would say that the, the eggs were like a nickel, right? A nickel. Yeah. A... All right. I just got I just got a breaking news from Sid. Uh, the Detroit Crow, which is being run by Fuad Abiyad, that's his show. That's going to be on April 14th. So that's the week after the. Was that the week after? Yeah. Or weeks after. It's the week after. Uh, it's I, I, the list I have, and I want you to confirm one name on it. I have Martin Fitzwater, Justin Rodriguez, William Martins, Ron Gordon, John De La Rosa, maybe Hollingshead, maybe. But I also have uh, Good Vito. Did Good Vito get a, a yeah? A good Vito. Good Vito. He got a visa for the U.S. Yeah, the, he could get, he got the visa last time for the U.S., but not Spain, where he was. Oh. oh, okay, that's what it was. Okay, so that that should be good. That that'll be a good show. I'm surprised yeah. more guys are not going to do that show, especially since it's like right after the Arnold. Yeah. Well, they may jump in. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. You never know. I mean, I, I, De La Rose is like my hero. He's like pulling a Milos this year. He's doing all the shows. Yeah. Very smart. Well, he's got to qualify. I, I don't think he's qualified yet, right? No, he's qualified. No points. You got to win. You got to win now. You got to win a show. It's, it's no. not so easy. So he probably has a better chance of winning Detroit than winning the, um, yeah. The yeah. Arnold Brazil. But you know gonna, got, I, I would assume, I guess, they're going to live stream the Arnold Brazil. I, I would, yeah, I would, I would guess so. I mean, they did the other two Arnolds, but I, this is, I think Tamer's running this show with his, with his brother Tarek, right? I think it's Muscle yeah. Contest is running it. I don't, I, so I don't know if they're, I don't know if it's going to be free like the other one, but I'm sure there'll be a live stream there. So yeah. let me see if I can pull that up. What else? I wanted you to comment on supposedly Bader is holding a, a very big men's physique pro show. It's going to be the most prize money ever given or so, or no, I think he said for classic, it's going to be the most prize money ever given. Yeah. In the summer, in the summer. The summer right? Yeah. It's in Dubai. Hopefully It'll we be, go to that. Yeah. Anyone holding water with 130 degree, uh, <laughs> <by weather. laughs> that's right. It's very, very warm there. Very dry too. What, all right, what was I looking up again? Uh, Detroit Pro, or are we looking no. up uh, Bader? Uh, You're looking up the phone number for Dr. Richard. No, <laughs> now you can you can't confuse me. You're supposed to, you're supposed to, <laughs> you're supposed to focus. You? Chris, you're not supposed to confuse me. 
It was uh, you were talking about the yeah the Detroit Pro. That's what you you left off on. Oh, you said you want to add my comments on something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember what I was going to say. A bit too important. Maybe the people in the, in the comments will remind me what I was looking for. Working with. Oh, the yeah, the, I, I was saying that. Um, I want to mention that the New York Pro they're raising the prize money to. Twenty thousand dollars this year, so don't be surprised if, if you see these guys continue to compete show after show after show. So all the, all the shows have a, a, an additional ten grand on them, but the new I think the New York Pro is going to be the highest aside from the um, the Arnold's. So Nick Rocker's mom and dad were at the uh, at the opening. Oh, they, they yes. Oh, that yeah. You said that before. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm Nick's going to be in the New York Pro. He's got to be the favorite going into that. I would imagine. Yeah, I want to cast her as part of the, you know, mothers of the IPV bodybuilders. Maybe we should get her on the show. She should do heavy muscle radio. Well, I, I told her, I said, I want to do the wrap up, the pre judging wrap up of the Olympia. I mean, the Olympia, <laughs> the, the New York Pro, because I'm going to go and she's obviously going to be there. And maybe yeah. me, her, and Sid can do it. <laughs> I, I think I think I might go to that show, actually. She I, has I, a great I, eye. She has a great I eye. I haven't been to the New York Pro in a long time. So I'm, I think I'm going to make a my journey. She knows what she's there. talking about. No, she doesn't know. She was, they're into the whole sport. It's great when your parents actually like what you're doing. You know what I mean? Then yeah. support it. <laughs> that's, that's the new generation for our generation. They didn't even know what bodybuilding was. You know, they yeah. thought that, you know, they thought it wasn't even a sport. Yeah. Now, now, really you have, now you have Nick Walker's mom, like critiquing like tans and prejudging how it was running on so-and-so. <laughs> Maybe we should get, we should do an iron debate. I could get Nick Walker's mom and Carlos Thomas. Oh, that would be the greatest show ever, Dave. Right? <laughs> How funny would that be? Yeah. She'd come with the facts. She'd come with the emotion. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Life in Louisville, for the tip. Nine ninety nine. Pretty nice. All right. I wanted to bring up something else. Let me get my list out here. All the stuff that we need to talk about before we wrap up today. Um, By the way, Jose's arms are still twenty. Easy. Are they really? Oh gosh! Unbelievable. It, he's not looking to make a comeback, is he? No, but he looks big. Yeah, I was going to say he looked big in those pictures. Yeah, big and lean. Branch looked pretty big in those pictures too. I got to tell you. Yeah, Br Branch is Branch is big and in shape. Yeah. Yeah, Branch is very. Well, Branch just launched a new uh, supplement line, so I'm sure he's probably doing some pictures for that. So that's a smart. It's always smart if you're gonna, you know, do something like that. You want to kind of pump that up a little bit. All right. So we, I mentioned the Detroit Pro with the lineup. So we got a lot. We got a lot of. Uh, we got a lot of shows coming up. Let me just pull up one more thing here. I love. We. I think we mentioned this. I really like this new IFBB Pro. Website, very very what organized. What do you like about it, Dave? It's well organized. And Which is uh, one that was you you disliked? The, the I like, I didn't really like it before this. The year yeah. it was hard, it was hard to find shit on there. But all right, so we all right we did the Arnold class. We got the UK. We did, and we get the class of the uh, South America show coming up April fifth through seventh. Detroit Pro, that's a Fuad show, and that's going to be April fourteenth. And then we got the. New York Pro on May 18th in uh, Teaneck, New Jersey. So you better book your hotels now. And then, of course, you have the Cal Pro the week after the New York Pro. That's Tamer Show out in California. And then June 9th. Oh, we got a busy schedule. June 9th is the Toronto sh Super Show. Yeah. And the weekend after that is the Alicante Show, the M Pro Classic in Spain. So there should be no reason why we can't get everyone qualified for the Olympia. Mm -hmm. Then the June third, twenty third, the week after that, in Italy, Milan, Italy is the Flex Weekend Italy Pro. So there is a, th this might be the year of the most qualifiers, Chris, I've ever yeah. seen. It's like every weekend is this, this one. Yeah, it's nonstop. Milo, if Milos was competing uh, these he days, he would have he would have easily set the record. He probably still has the record for the most shows competing, but he could have he could have knocked off at least twenty five shows this year. You know, <laughs> he would have done them all. <laughs> it, would have kept, it would have just kept going, Chris. Why not? Unbelievable. Jose was talking about like all the shows that you know he would do. 
Yeah, well, there's not that many 212 shows, but there's a lot more <laughs> open to. I think if Jose was competing in this this time frame, he would be doing open shows. I don't think he would be an only 212 guy. Yeah, well, he, he did a couple open shows. We were talking no, about that's true. But I think it, it seems like these 212 guys are going up, you know, and, and just staying in the open class because they see that they're very competitive in that, which yeah. for whatever well, they reason. Grow out of the, they grow out of the 212, too. Yeah, I mean, you got. You know, it's, so, it's so crazy that, like, Hottie was 212, Derek was 212, I know. Bonac was 212, Antonio was 212. Yep. It's. It's interesting that we're seeing, and you know, Lee Priest always said it right from the beginning. He said, "I don't know why there's a two, what, twelve class. Why can't these guys just compete in the open like I had to do back in the day?" Yeah. He's right. You know, it, it held. I think for a while it held a lot of these guys back. Derek held himself back. Derek never should have been a two twelve guy. Maybe right after he won his pro card at the USA, that was the only time he was really two twelve. Yeah, and after that, he should have been in the open. Yeah, no, because he was he was uh... too big. Yeah, you know, the, the 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 year Kamal beat him. Ron Parlow sent me a picture. Of, yep. Um, I told you that story, right? He sent me a picture of him yep. like eight weeks out, and he was like, um, "Looked retarded." He said he looked unbeatable as an open guy. And yeah. I told Ron, I said, "By the time he makes it to the twelve two twelve, <laughs> he'll be very beatable." And that's exactly yeah. what happened. Yep. Because he was crazy at two thirty two thirty six. Yeah. You know, little little holding a little water, a little bit of fat, six seven weeks yeah. out, but crazy. Now, you know, everyone's talking about Hottie, obviously, after the two wins at the Arnold and the Ar yeah. Arnold UK uh, being pretty much unbeatable. And I mean, I, I, when I saw his conditioning, I was very impressed in Perth. And I, you know, but having seen that, uh, Derek has had a whole year, obviously, to work on refining his body and putting size on. Do you think we're going to see, I mean, and he's still young. Do you think we're going to see a really, really much improved Derek on stage too? He has to be to win. Right, so, but you, you think he'll, he'll he'll accomplish that is what I'm asking, I guess. Um, I think so because I think that, um, you know, when in school when you when when you know what to study for, you yeah. don't like a test. He, 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 if you know what to study for, it's easy to get an A. Like if you know what the questions are going to be, you don't need to know the you don't right. need to know what the exact questions are. Right. But you have to have a general idea of what the questions will be in a course that's just so big. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows the answer. The answer is that he will win if, or he can win if he, you know, has better condition than he had last year. Mm -hmm. I don't think getting this, I don't think necessarily the same condition, um, that he had last year, which was very good condition, uh, but bigger. I, I'm not sure if that is enough, you know, to get by Hadi. And, and keep in mind, although that, like, I, I thought Hadi was better in um, in Columbus than he was. Uh, Absolutely, week 100%. Or so. um, But Hadi was able to do that coming off the Olympia. So, you know, he didn't have time to rest to be able to make improvements so right. here we are in march he has time to you know regroup and rest and then push the gas you know all the way you know to the olympia so in other words you know he looked better i mean he looked even this was even a better package than the olympia and yeah. to do that a period of time is impressive so imagine what he can do in a longer period of time i i don't think that he has to make any size improvements to his body at this point i you know the only criti critique i can absolutely give you about hottie is i would like to see his lower back with those you know the lower lats attached a little drier i think i don't see those those lower lat striations i think those can come in a little bit more it's weird because around his waist the front and the sides are so dry and grainy i don't know if he's flat back there or something like that but i, I felt like when he pulled his arms back i didn't see as much those those latch yeah. yeah. he was he definitely lean enough to see those so i don't know if that was a flatness issue or, or what it was but um 
I mean, that's the, if he gets that, he, he's unbeatable. This guy. I mean, he's just he's he's too complete and he's too and he's too hard. And he's he knows how to show his body to its strength and hide his weaknesses. And and I, I just think Derek's going to have a tough time with him just because of the graininess. Now, if Derek brings a better look than he brought last year, size improvements, and then he gets those abs chiseled in, I think that he he'll retain the title. But we haven't seen that from him. we haven't seen really really grainy abs from from Derek and. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to the battle because either one of those, flip a coin, I don't care who wins. I think that it's, who's ever the best should, you know, I'll be happy with the outcome on that one. Um, you know, obviously I was rooting for Derek because he had never won the Olympia. Now that he, they both have one title, it's kind of like 1-1. One, one. Let's Whoever the best man is, that's, that's who we want to see up on that yeah. stage winning, you know, at this point. So, I, you know, you, you got to take your hat off to these guys. The guys that are really – grinding it out and bringing the level of conditioning that they need to the stage. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's making it better for us, the fans to, to, to enjoy the show mm-hmm. as opposed to in the past, you kind of have to pick from who the best of the, of the guy with the, the least amount of, you know, deficits. Now we're seeing guys that are bringing, you know, guns a blazing with all the, well, you know, and we have to actually pick who the best guy is. That's a way better way to do it than have to pick, you know, who the best of the worst is essentially, you know, yeah. So I, I think that Hadi doesn't need, like I said, I, I think if he starts trying to put too much size on, I think he's going to ruin his physique. I don't think he needs to at this point. I think he's pretty much, if he brought the same look every year that he brought to this Arnold, I think he can win over and over and over again, you know, until, yeah. until something happens and his body breaks down and he's not going to, you know, and he has injuries or something like that. But yeah. I mean, Ronnie would have won for 20 years straight, right? If he didn't get if that back, didn't get injured and he didn't lose that lat. I mean, I don't know if Jay would have beat him, you know, but, you know, he left himself vulnerable and then Jay, you know, obviously capitalized on that and won that show. So it's usually Mr. Olympia loses because something happens to him and he's just not the same Mr. Olympia that he was the year before that. Well, as you can, you know, the difference is when you're, when you're continually striving to get bigger, the, the physique falls apart anyway. Right, because you either invariably get injured or you or you ruin your shape and structure. Hundred percent, you just you just nailed it. You and you know what the, you know what the terrible gallery, thing is, Chris? Big, huh? The terrible thing about that whole thing is that you can't stop yourself when you're in the midst of it. Even Dorian said you always want to be better than the year before, so you keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah. Even when people tell you you're perfect now, you don't need to get any bigger. This is a good look. Don't do it. You can't stop yourself. It's <laughs> It's impossible. I'm telling you, it's really impossible. It um, is. He's 100 percent right. When you're that we're, driven, we're, right? One of Jay's one of Jay's best quotes: "We were, we we were all better, better, smaller." Right. You know, whether right. it be Phil, you know, Ronnie, Jay. Mm-hmm. Hey, Ronnie on. definitely was probably his best in in 98, 99, right? Yeah, I told Jose a story because we're driving and I. Uh, we were talking, of course, bodybuilding the second week get together. And uh, I said, uh, I saw Coleman at the 90, uh, now I'm confused, 95 Montreal Pro, because that's where I met Milos. Mm. Um, Milos was third. Wheeler was second. And it was the first Ronnie. time Ronnie... Ronnie Ronnie was first, and Ronnie posed to Barbara Streisand song, if you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. And they, the cords in his hamstrings Crazy. and his glutes and his, the dryness of his back double, right? the craziness of the side chest durations, and the front double. In 95, his midsection, he was smaller, but his midsection was puny. It wasn't small. It was ridiculous. What year was that? 95. 95 Toronto, uh, Toronto, or, no, Montreal Pro. And I went up to Ronnie. He was signing autographs. I didn't know who Ronnie was. And I said, quote, you were going to be Mr. Olympia. And Dorian was Mr. Olympia. Was it? Oh, he was still, yeah, yeah, yeah of course I, he was. Yeah. I just, I, I mean, I thought like that year, that's how impressive he was at that show. I mean, Wheeler was the hype and Wheeler looked great. But Ronnie just was different level at that show. Yeah, that's it right there. 
Yeah. I don't, I don't, you know what was, was going on? 95, 96, 97. Ronnie really didn't have consistency. He would, one show he'd be amazing. The next show he'd be a little off. I, I don't think he really knew what he was doing. He was kind of just starting to, you know, get his bearings. I don't know if he was working with Chad at, at that point yet. No, 1998. Yeah. So he was kind of winging it. So he would sometimes nail it perfectly. And then, and then, and then he'd be amazing. And then he'd show up for the next show or two and he wouldn't be as good. Uh, but then once he got with Chad, I think he he kind of he nailed it every time, pretty much, you know. Yeah. So, but well, yeah, those are the exciting times, and uh, you know we've had a lot of good battles. Obviously, recently it seems like we're this young crop of bodybuilders that started out a couple three or four years ago are now starting to mature, and we're seeing we're going to see a lot of battles of the same guys for the next five to ten years. And and then they'll get too old and we'll get a new crop. But right now, these guys are still in their late 20s, you know, and, and it's exciting. And so I think we have a lot of great battles up ahead over the next couple of years with these guys. And, you know, guys like Nick Walker and and, and Derek Lunsford and Hottie still relatively young, you know, uh, his body doesn't look like it's tired at all like that. You got guys like Carlos Thomas Jr. and Hunter Labrador and, you know, Tony out. It's, it's, it's great. I mean, we really have a, we're back kind of into like a really kind of new renaissance of, of bodybuilding. And hopefully these guys just keep getting better and better and the battles get better and better. And I like the fact that, you know, nowadays you have to win a show to make it to the Olympia. So there's more shows. We're going to, I think the quality is going to get better of all these shows because you have to win. And that's just going to make bodybuilding that much more enjoyable. So. Yeah. I think um, there'll be a couple of storylines out of the Arnold yeah. America. Yep. 100 percent there's going to be a couple you know where there's going to be a couple big storylines yeah Depends, you know who who's first second and third and what they look like getting first second and third mm. i'm like you said good veto has got to be considered and carlos has got to be considered the kind of the wild cards in that in that lineup and we'll have to see how they do all right we're going to wrap up tonight guys thanks for joining us live as always and as we say every week with heavy muscle radio the truth hurts we will see you again next week.